So what we have here today is an item that most people will not recognize. Even doctors would not recognize. It is a modern copy, but it is a very expert copy of the world's first stethoscope. It was invented in actually an instant of inspiration by a French physician named René Lenec. And to understand how this all came about. We have to go back a little bit in time before Lynette came on the scene. For centuries, medicine was practiced by balancing humors. There were four humors coming all the way back from Hippocrates and from the influence of a, of a second century Roman physician named Galen, in that the idea when you were ill was that one of these four fluids, blood, yellow bile, phlegm, or black bile, got out of balance, and the doctor's role was to get it back into balance. Well, over the centuries, this began to be chipped away. But at the end of the 1700s, one of the major advances that occurred in medicine was by an Italian physician named Morgagni. And Morgagni spent his entire life listening to patients' symptoms and then when he did their autopsies after they died, correlated the symptoms of the patient with pathologic findings in the organs. And he wrote a book, which historians call Decetibus, and it is on the seats and causes of disease as determined by pathologic anatomy. It completely changed the way physicians began to approach patients. They began to listen to their symptoms, and then when they died, correlate those symptoms with findings at autopsy. Well, ironically, in the same year that Morgagni published Decetibus on the seats and causes of disease as determined by anatomy, a Viennese physician named Leopold Algenbrucker published a small monograph on using something that we now call percussion. And this is where a physician would put his hand, one hand on the, say, the chest, and then tap, hearing a sound. If the chest is full of air, you would hear one sound. If the chest abnormally was full of fluid or, or the lung was consolidated from pneumonia, you would hear a different sound. And Augenbrugger learned this because his father was an innkeeper, and his father used to tap beer barrels in the same way. But Augenbrugger's work never really got very far until a man in Paris, Nicolas Covissar, read it in the original German and translated it into French and began to use percussion. So now physicians had inspection, palpation, and percussion as part of their approach to physical examination. And Covissar in particular developed what he called grand rounds, a term that we continue to use today in which he would examine or hear the story of a patient and their symptoms. He would examine the patient, and then any of the patients that he had examined died in the afternoon, he would do the autopsy. And he would teach with literally legions of people following him. And for the first half of the 19th century, Paris became the undisputed center of medicine. Before the revolution, you became a professor based on who you knew the aristocracy. After the revolution, you became a professor based on what you knew, your ability. And the French in particular called themselves sensualists in that they used all of their sensations in order to examine the patient. And into this mix comes the man of the hour today, René Lenec. Lenec was born in 1781 in an area of France called Brittany. When he was six years old, his mother died of tuberculosis. And while he never fully admitted to this, he was clearly exposed and was a sickly individual through most of his relatively short life. 
Well, after his mother died, his father sent him first to live with his grandmother, and then at about age 12, he sent him to live with an uncle. And his uncle was a physician, and he spent most of his adolescence living with his uncle. He had a very good musical ability, and during that time became very accomplished on the flute, and that ear for sounds turned out to be very helpful to him later on. He also worked for a time as a carpenter's apprentice, so he developed some skills as a carpenter during that time, which again turned out to serve him in good favor later on. But from his exposure to his uncle, he decided he really wanted to be a physician. So right after the French Revolution had revolutionized French medical teaching, Lenech, in the year 1800, shows up to Paris to learn medicine, go to medical school. Well, he was a brilliant student. After medical school, he began to work as an assistant physician at various places, but he always wanted to be the sort of the physician in chief. Well, finally, in 1816, he got his chance. He was named the head of a relatively small hospital called the Necker Hospital. And literally a, a week into that time, he was asked to see a young woman who was having considerable breathing problems. Now, Lenek had become very interested in diseases of the chest. And he, like other physicians, when people were having breathing problems, tried to listen to what the sounds of the chest were like by literally putting his ear right up to the chest of the patient. And he wasn't sure how to do that gracefully in front of the woman's family. So he decided to go for a walk. And he went for a while and walked through the Tuileries Gardens. And there he saw two young children playing. There was a fallen tree trunk. And one of the two was listening with a, a branch, a piece of wood, at the end of the tree trunk with the branch in his ear. And his friend had a pin and he was scratching the tree trunk. And the game was for the person who had the, the branch in his ear to guess how many times his friend had scratched the tree. Lenek is watching this and he has this moment of inspiration. And he runs, literally runs back to the hospital. First thing he did is he took very heavy gauge paper, rolled it up and went to the patient that he needed to, to examine and listen. And to his great delight, he could hear sounds and in fact hear sounds better. So using his carpentry skills, because he knew how to use a lathe, he manufactured this piece of wood. It would be placed, for example, on the patient's chest and you would put your ear in this manner and listen to the patient breathe or potentially listen to the heartbeat in that manner. And he found that it was actually an improvement. And he called this immediate auscultation because for the very first time in physical examination, there was something that was mediating the interaction between a patient and a physician. Well, in the course of about two, two and a half years, he had enough information on the various sounds that he was hearing in the chest to write a book. His book was an immediate sensation. It was on the diseases in, in the chest as a result of immediate auscultation. And it cost, at the time, several francs. And if you paid a few extra francs, you could get a stethoscope that was made by Lenek himself. And in fact, for the first five to 10 years after he wrote his book, virtually every stethoscope in existence had been made by Lenek. The stethoscope was the first device that physicians used to examine patients where, as I say, there was some mediation between the physician and the patient. But during the course of the 1800s, devices such as the otoscope to look in the ears, the ophthalmoscope to look in the eyes, the blood pressure cuff, even a thermometer, all of these were developed. And all the tools that we now teach medical students, even today, to do a complete physical exam are all products 
of the 1800s and all were developed after the development of the stethoscope. So this truly was a major innovation for, for physicians in the way they examined patients.